So thank you everybody for coming. Um, tomorrow is the 50 year anniversary of the unsolved murder of 16 year old Patricia Smith. Patricia was known to people who loved her and cared about her as Susie, and that was her preferred name. Sadly, despite the best efforts of police and forensic experts for decades, the case has remained unsolved, and this has contributed to decades of grief for the Schmidt family. As you would imagine, it's hard enough for a family to lose a loved one in such horrific circumstances, and that grief is compounded by the fact they've had to endure 50 years of not knowing what happened and who was responsible and knowing that those people that were responsible are still out there amongst us. Susan was a nice young girl. She was from a good family. She was at her second day at work. She had a life ahead of her and sadly it was cut short by a predator who was out there in the community. The people who did this need to be held to account if the people have passed and have died, it's still important for the Schmidt family to know who was responsible and to seek a finding from the coroner as to who was responsible for her death. The purpose of today is to make an appeal on behalf of the Schmidt family for information to help solve the case and to advise you of developments in the case and how it's progressed over the last 50 years. As I said, it was Susie's second night at work at the Burger King. Just a nice 16 year old girl doing what all our sons and daughters do, get a second job, start work. And it should have been the start of a very exciting time for her. She finished work at 1.45 a.m. on Saturday the 18th of December 1971 and went outside to wait for her dad, who was running a few minutes late. A good friend told her not to accept the lift, to wait that little bit longer for her dad. And sadly, for whatever reason, um, Susie didn't follow that advice. But regardless of that, if she wanted to walk home, she should have been able to walk home. She shouldn't have had to feel frightened and she shouldn't have been home. At 9.30 the following morning, her dad reported her missing to the Darlington Police Station. And later that afternoon at about 6 p.m., an off-duty police officer working for the local CFS was driving along Adams Road at Hallett Cove in a fire truck. That road now um, forms part of the Lonsdale Highway. As the truck drove along, he saw the remains of a young girl in the grass on the dirt verge and on closer inspection found the partially clad body of Susan, who had obviously died a violent death and had obviously been sexually assaulted. There's a number of clues in this case, and we hope that by releasing some of these clues that people who know people around that time, it could be people associated with Susie, it could be people uh, who went to the Burger King regularly, um, it could be somebody um, who simply knows the offenders and who have made, have no connection with Susie. I'll explain for you. The gold, brass, nickel and metal filings are from a key cutting business. There is no doubt about that. Microscopical particles from a shoe repair business, so where you fit new soles to shoes and they grind the soles to polish them off. Welding slag, which is a byproduct of the welding process left when you weld the things together. Some electrical waste, which has been identified as being consistent with that used at what was then the Phillips Industries at Henman. And importantly, some iridescent blue paint, which is exactly the same blue paint used to paint the whole Monaros at that time. There were some other paint flakes, which we don't know where they came from. Small pink flakes, or pink on one side, white on the other. And missing from Susie was a small necklet that she wore, which was engraved with Susie on the back. And we now have fortunately, DNA profile of um, one of the offenders. So today, the people responsible for Susie's death, and we do, do believe there's more than one, would be at least in their mid-60s and older. Um, most likely, one or more of them is alive. Some may have passed. There is a reward in existence now of up to $1 million for information leading to the conviction of those responsible for Susie's death. 
And obviously, as in all our cases, we will consider immunities for people from prosecution for those people who are not directly responsible for Susie's death. So in conclusion, I can say that despite 50 years passing, the investigation file is in good shape. A massive amount of work has been done over the years. There was obviously a comprehensive investigation in 1971. There was extensive reviews in 1989, 1996, 2000 and 2015. And now, again, last year and moving into this year, there's been a transition of the file from the retiring officer who's held the file for just over 20 years and he's passed it on to a new detective who will retain that file and that will be the catalyst for an independent review of the investigation and to look at what other opportunities we have. The, there's several possibilities that's possible that Susie went with somebody that she knew and that those people are responsible for her death. It's possible she accepted a lift from a stranger and had started to walk home to a Sea Cliff Park home. Or alternatively, that she was actually abducted from the roadside. But there is definitely evidence that two or more people were involved in her sexual assault and death. Two suspects emerged during the course of the investigation, and we have been unable to prove that those people were not involved, but on the other side of the coin, we can't prove that they were involved. One of those suicided three months after her death and shortly after being questioned by police. And another suspect, his DNA um, wasn't a match to the profile that we had. But that doesn't mean that person wasn't involved because multiple people, multiple people were involved and we only have the profile of one person. In total, there's been 15 people of interest nominated as potential suspects over the years. Those fifth, other 15 have been excluded. Uh, you recall in 2015, we sent um, biological material to New Zealand who had state-of-the-art uh, DNA processes in their laboratories there at the time. And sadly, that didn't bring a result. However, within South Australia, we have an outstanding forensic science SA facility and we have some of the best people in the world in the DNA field there. They've now been able to create a profile for the first time, which is capable of being searched across the DNA database. We can say that that profile is not on the database, so we don't know who that suspect is, but we are exploring a number of familial matches um, to see if we can link the offenders. So in simple terms, that means we've looked at the database to see if our suspect, unknown suspect, as a relative on the database. If we identify a potential relative, then we'll then construct family trees and work our way backwards to identify the offenders. So it's really using the same process we use to capture the North Adelaide rapist and the killer of Susan Pole. It worked in those cases, it can work in this case. However, that process will take a very long time to go through that and then obviously um, the Schmidt family want this matter resolved as quickly as we can. And the truth of it is that there's somebody out there today, as I speak, that could solve this very, very quickly. If somebody was to ring Crime Stoppers tonight and talk to a detective and put forward the correct name, we could match that to the DNA and solve this case within weeks. And I would ask people who have information about this that they haven't passed on, if those clues help them to think about who may be responsible, I'd ask you to ring in tonight um, and provide that information to police. And as I say, we, we can solve that case within a few weeks. Help to provide answers for the Schmidt family. The people are out there. The people have killed a young girl. They're dangerous people. And um, they need to be held to account. As I say, if they're dead, um, and we can prove that they were responsible, then we would seek a finding from the coroner on behalf of the family to, to find that they were responsible. The reward is a genuine offer of a $1 million reward. We want to give away $1 million. All somebody has to do to collect it is to nominate who the offender is, if they know, 
um, then they could be eligible for up to $1 million, which is a life-changing amount of money. I'm happy to take questions. Of those clues um, on the on the screen before, what what of those are new evidence? Uh, they've been collected over time, and this is the first time we've made all of those things available. And the reason we've done that is that now we're at 50 years. Um, sometimes we have to hold information back for operational reasons, um, but we've reached 50 years now, and um, we think that releasing those may help people to identify who may be involved. People who hung around the Burger King, people who had friends at the time, um, people who knew somebody associated with um, key cutting businesses. So realistically, we are seeking to do everything humanly possible again to see if we can solve this question. How significant is the, the DNA profile? That's significant. Um, probably the best breakthrough we've had in 50 years. Um, you know, as I say, it's worked for the Susan Pole case, it worked for the North Adelaide Breakfast, there's no reason it won't work for us. You know, if, if we um, were to have a name put forward, we can see if we get that person's DNA and compare it, and if it's a match, um, then we know who's responsible. And then that would be the start then of a much broader investigation to identify the other people involved. Have you made any familial matches with that profile yet? Yeah, there has been a number of familial matches, um, which is, it doesn't mean that the match they've made is proof, but it means there is a possibility that our offender could be related to a person who's been in prison. So we'll go through the process of investigating that, but that's a very uh, laborious and long task, um, but it can yield results. Are you able to tell us how many matches you've made so far? Eight. So you've identified eight people who could potentially be family members of the suspect. The suspect. Um, and upon your um, analysis of the scene at the time, um, was there forensic evidence linking the case to more than one person? And if so, how many? Um, it's clear to investigators that there's two or more people involved. Um, and the other thing that is clear to investigators is that Susie was most likely killed somewhere else and dumped there. So it's a disposal site more likely than the murder site. So the necklace, is that a new piece of evidence? Sorry? Is the necklace the missing one, is that a, is that a new piece of evidence or have you that? Um, I I'm not sure if that's been released publicly before, but that's definitely in the file. And as I say, we've conducted a complete review of the file and we've tried to identify all the little things that have been identified over the years um, and compile them in a succinct list so that somebody out there can consider those um, and see if that helps anyone. Do you suspect that the, the blue paint may have meant that she was abducted in a, or you know, she got into a blue hole in the Yeah, all of those things were located at the scene that gives us confidence that they're connected to the offenders. They were in places that you wouldn't get through a casual contact. I understand um, that she was picked up uh, four days earlier by um, a man in another car. Um, has that person, was that person of interest back then? Realistically, everybody who was associated with her was spoken to back then, and I wouldn't talk about individual people, but anybody who was remotely under suspicion was investigated at the time. And I mean, this has been a hugely comprehensive file. I think it's had like four or five reviews. Um, and you know, again, and so this, this file is in pretty good shape. And it's been with one of the most experienced detectives in our branch who's done an outstanding job on it, getting it to this point. Um, as as have the people in the past that you know just sadly sometimes we're not rewarded for the effort we put in which means that that's bad for the Schmidt family and I feel very sorry that we haven't been able to deliver a result for them 50 years ago it doesn't take away the grief they suffered from losing Susan but 50 years of not knowing is incredibly tough um, you said you've had 15 persons of interest did that include the two that you referred to specifically yes 
Uh, sorry, no, two. So 17 in total, can you yes. those two? Yes. The other 15 have been ruled out entirely? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.